I'm Jerome Rose, and I'm here today at the AI and retail event here at Shop Talk, uh, and we're spotlighting one of our uh, great partners, Fractal. And I've got Akil Behill for, uh, for here, and uh, excited to have a conversation with him today. Why don't you introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Akhil. I am a client partner in the AI organization at Fractal.ai. Fractal is a global AI consulting leader, and I lead AI client solutioning and market interfacing for about two thirds of our portfolio. Well, Akhil, as we get started today, one of the things that uh, you know I, I hear from clients is that as they think about going down this AI journey, data is such a critical component. Do you have any recommendations that, that you can share on how you, you encourage clients to think about their, their data environment as they go down this AI journey? Absolutely, Joe. So uh, we have a sort of unique view about data foundations in that we think you should do just as much as you need right now, simply because of the pace at which the technology is evolving. You don't know how much you need to do uh, because we think that you're going to probably need to do less as the technology becomes better and better. So let me take an example and talk about that a little bit. So most organizations would think about, hey, uh, I need to set up a lot of metadata, I need to clean up the schema, um, I need to sort of set up a lot of ETL pipelines before I can start to do anything with my data. What we're finding uh, is often true with generative AI and agentic solutions is that you can leave it to the agents to figure out a lot of the things, okay. especially as you start moving from structured data, which a lot of the retail data infrastructure is optimized for, to you know unstructured data like images, videos, documents, etc. Uh, you can get more done by just letting the AI figure it out. Um, and of course, there are situations where you need to do foundations well. You need a lot of governance, uh, areas where you have riskier decisions or decisions which might have reputational or financial risk. In those situations, for sure, you should focus on the foundations. Uh, but our belief is you go for the value first, prove out the solution, and then you can come back to it and f uh, optimize your foundations to do better with your data. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, when, when you think about examples of where clients have done this well, right? can you give us some perspective of what those examples may have looked like? What? Absolutely. So uh, see, for example, a lot of times our clients are thinking about, hey, how do I connect the insights from the data that I'm collecting from POS points in the store to the signals that I'm collecting from e-commerce, right? And often they would go about uh, setting up these data pipelines on how am I going to bring these two things together, yeah. right? In those kind of situations, for example, this could be an approach you could take where as long as you have a common customer ID, we would say just throw the schema of your e-commerce data and POS data all at the uh, Gen AI and let it figure out how it's going to join it, how it's going to disambiguate. Uh, you can give it a catalog of the metrics that you care about but let it figure out you know, how it's going to calculate those metrics on the fly. And we've seen that you know, as this technology is getting better and better, uh, you can get a lot more out of doing a lot less. That makes a lot of sense. Curious, what are some of the common challenges you're seeing right. uh, from, from clients? So there are a few typical challenges that we're seeing repeated across clients. Of course, there are idiosyncratic patterns. Uh, the first challenge is typically uh, strategic buy-in from the top management mm -hmm. and I, incident, uh, you know, incidentally we are seeing a lot of buy-in already now, uh, now that we are two years in. So that problem is kind of solving itself. Right. Uh, the second problem that we are seeing is uh, several organizations are uh, looking for the ROI too quick and too early. Mm -hmm. um, what we suggest is you know, the opportunity cost of missing out on this technology is very high. So rather than worrying about ROI on point applications, we suggest taking a portfolio approach where you invest in certain core capabilities around generative AI, agent take, create a large portfolio of experiments and then go look for ROI in that portfolio instead of worrying about each application and whether it is yielding the value or not. What happens with that is that A, you build a certain set of capabilities which can already take you further than uh, the peers uh, in your industry who may not be doing that. And you're able to quickly find out what things are ready to go today 
versus what things might be ready to go six months down the line as the technology improves in this particular dimension versus that dimension and so on. I'm curious, I hear a lot of clients ask questions about um, more functional areas like demand forecasting and right. planning. Are right. there certain uh, areas like that or functional areas like that that you think people are having more success with? Absolutely. So that's a great question. So um, I think one area where people are having a lot of success is in just improving internal operations, especially operations which are knowledge based okay. and broad based. Um, so because because of a few reasons, right? One, the technology is much more mature to work with knowledge databases. Uh, there's less reputational risk of something going on if it's only your internal colleagues who are using the tools versus something that customers or partners are using. Uh, so to give you an example, uh, you know, without, I'm not at liberty to share details, but uh, there are certain retailers where we have built, for example, uh, retail store manager assistants, right? Okay. Which are essentially uh, co-pilots which hook into you know, various databases that a store manager has access to, to be able to figure out, hey, who's scheduled today? What's the what's the stock on this in the back room? Uh, when is my next, uh, you know, inventory arriving for this particular product? Uh, in earlier, they would have had to rummage through various systems that they need to learn uh, to be able to get these answers. Now they can just ask for it and, and they get clear reports and that kind of thing saves several hours for somebody like a store manager who's who's a very important person to keep a good tight ship running and, sure. and that that helps yeah uh, I, I appreciate that example and we've seen something right. we've seen very similar uh, situations as you think about the next few years right wh wh what do you see being the big focus areas right. uh, for retailers over the next few years as this uh, technology in, evolves right. as well as uh, as there's more adoption and, yeah. and more usage. So I'm glad you brought it up because I just realized I didn't address the forecasting point that you mentioned earlier. That is in fact something that I'm expecting to improve a lot in the okay. next few years. Because if you think of it, um, the transformers technology, it's been very successful with language, with images, with videos. The one space where it is sort of still the jury is out is uh, time series models. Okay. Uh, we've historically built all these forecasting models, which are very custom, very specific to our right. data. Can we build foundational models, which are trained once, used wherever, right? That, given how important forecasting is to almost every process in a retail uh, a retailer's business, right. uh, that would make a big uh, change for retailers to be able to do high quality uh, forecasting at various different levels of granularity, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, right? Uh, another use case that I'm looking forward to is, uh, you know, for the uh, vision capabilities of these models to mature okay. to the level where language capabilities are today, because I think that opens a lot more uh, use cases in terms of, you know, content generation, uh, personalization, marketing, targeting, and so on and so forth. Uh, so that's another one. And then, you know, there are general trends which are not just applicable to retail, but more agentic, higher intelligence models, uh, lower costs per token, uh, so on and so forth, which I think will help everybody. Uh, as you think about things people should avoid over the next three right. or five years so that they have more successful projects, are there certain uh, things that you would encourage them to, to, to maybe deprioritize or, or, right. or avoid? Um, I wouldn't, I would suggest taking a very empirical approach to this, sort of like your risk reward profile. Okay. Um, I think at this point, I would uh, encourage everybody to bet on the technology getting better. Okay. Um, and what that means is, even if you feel something is not ready right now, okay. it might get ready six months down the line. And just going through the process of framing your problem, understanding your data set, being able to articulate what would be successful, even if the technology is not there today to make it successful. I think that's helpful. And I would encourage companies to still try to do that. And then, you know, you can try very short, quick prototypes and see if it doesn't work. And then you can shelve it for six months and come back to it in six months. Uh, that's my general approach. But of course, uh, 
you know, uh, if I was to consult uh, a large retailer, I would say, you know, be more cautious about external facing use cases, okay. uh, do a lot, th lot more thorough evals, uh, guardrails, etc. on external use cases. Uh, cases with uh, video are less ready than cases with images, than use cases with language and so on. So that's that's the order in which one can start trying if one really just wants to focus on the lowest hanging fruit for now. That, that makes a, a lot of sense. Well, there you have it. We're, yep. we're, again, we're here at Shop Talk and getting great insights from Akil at Fractal and appreciate your, your Thanks, time. Thanks, Jerome. Today. Appreciate your time Thank as you. well.